Greetings and salutations. Today I'm going to show you how to deal with the 3 out of 4 bar on the M18 high output batteries. What I mean by the 3 out of 4 bars, if you take something that shows like this oh, and plug it in to the charger, it shows immediately green and indicating that it is fully charged. But if you were to take it out, Immediately after seeing that green and hit this button, it still only shows three. The charger is noticing something's wrong with the battery. It's at its full amount, meaning it's talking to the controller in here, and the controller saying it's fully charged. But the controller is also saying it only sees enough voltage to be around the 18.5-ish volt mark. Why that's happening is because the individual stacks of cells in here are unbalanced. And because they're unbalanced and this thing has no way of charging each section individually, I'll show you, I'll show you what I mean by sections in a little bit here. It just says that, oh, um, we're unbalanced. This is the best we're gonna get because one of the cells in the pack is all the way fully charged. So I can't dump any more current uh, into the rest of the pack. How you're going to fix that is you're going to go through and individually recharge all the cells so they're at the same voltage. You're going to have to take the battery apart for the 8 amp hour. It's actually just four screws here, 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 and here. They are different sizes, so keep track of that. For the 12 amp hour, you're going to take off the same four screws in that same four location, and in addition, four little smaller screws these aren't safety torques, these are safety torques, these are T10 safety torques, and these end up being a T9 safety torque. In addition to the battery, obviously, you are going to need a multimeter, uh, five volts, some alligator clips, and one of one or two, or however, however many you want to do, of uh, these little boards, and they're gonna be unsoldered. So what I did was I bought a set of alligator clamps which was just an alligator clamp on both ends. I then cut in the middle of that and then soldered on B minus B plus. So let's uh, go ahead and get this torn apart and I'll show you those cells. All right I switched over to the camera on the tripod so I can show you the process. So like I said you're gonna need a T10 we're gonna start with the uh, eight amp hour. You're gonna to wanna to unscrew these. And then you're gonna to wanna to unscrew the ones in the front. And for those of you that don't know, a safety Torx is just a Torx bit with a hole in the middle. Why they have it like that uh, is beyond me since everybody can just buy a safety Torx. I don't know what makes them so safe. So retain those and you'll notice that each end is a different size so don't mix that up. You won't cause too much damage uh, unless you're really rough with it. So once those two are out it very easily just pops right out. The uh, 8 amp hour you can actually just leave the top case in there and you'll notice I have a lot of oil in here that's actually bar oil most likely <clears throat> that seeped in there uh, be very be very careful because obviously you can short things out if you go from this point to this point because that then will directly short out that cell so you'll notice something here i had mentioned the cells before how this battery works is it has two 18 650 cells like that you can tell this is the positive since it kind of has a little dimple on it. This is the negative of that cell because it's just flush. And you'll notice it has another 18 set of 18650 cells, but the positive is now facing this side. And you flip it on over, the negative's over here. So this is a set, this is a set, this is a set, this is a set. There are five sets, and each set has two cells in it. The 12 amp hour, is set up the same way except it adds one more cell uh, to each each of the these uh, sets and the issue you're going to find here each set has a different voltage 
So let's go ahead and turn on our multimeter to DC. You're gonna see me not move the probes, so you'll see a negative here and there as I go through. That's just so I don't have to keep flip-flopping. And I'm gonna show you, I'm just tacking on right there, and we're tacking on onto the other side like that. We're reading 3.68 on this bank. So you'll notice the first set of banks, only two of them are connected. The other two on one side have four connected. You're gonna use that as the same point uh, and it's just going to flip-flop positive and negative based upon which side you want to charge. That holds true on this side as well, but you'll notice a single set is on the opposite end. So we were just on this set right here, so we're going to go ahead and measure the other set. And I can't see that, so I'm going to adjust. That one's 3.8. Okay. Let's go over to the next one. Like I said, you're going to see this negative, but you're going to get, it's going to get the point across. 3.44, that one's really low. They should be closer to 4.2. Let's go to this set here. 3.97, and what's this one at? 4.07. Okay, so the highest cell bank is 4.07. So my plan is going to be to charge up each one of these to that 4.07. So we're gonna go ahead and help it out and charge each individual uh, cell here. So that's where polarity comes into play and that's very important. And how you're gonna make sure that you're doing the right polarity is you are gonna use your multimeter and make sure that it only shows it as no negative. So as you can see there, it says 3.68. And what you'll do then is you'll see I was touching the black or negative side onto this side, and I was touching the positive onto, uh -huh. onto this piece. You're going to mimic that with your charger. You're gonna notice that the little lips here work out great for alligator clips. We are now going to take our USB-C and we're gonna plug it in. You notice it goes red. I'll show you what it looks like when nothing's attached to it. It shows it as a blue light. This is gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna go ahead and charge these up and just show that the process does work. All right, it's the next day. You'll also see I did end up cracking open the 12 amp hour. And since I have that open, I'll go ahead and show you the cell differences here between the eight and the 12. So as you can see, the 12 has a stack of three, still five groups. It's just three instead, one's kind of pushed out a little bit because they're circles. What's nice is the 12 amp hour actually has a little minus and plus corresponding to each little row uh, in the plastic. So I uh, don't know why they didn't do it on the eight, but uh, it is on the 12, so that might help you out as well. You might also notice that the charging board is suspended on this little aluminum plate here, painted aluminum plate. The reason I did that is because there was quite a bit of heat coming off of these things, uh, so much so where I couldn't even put my finger kind of near the IC there. So figured I'd tape them up and suspend them so they didn't hurt my wood and so that they'd have a little bit more airflow underneath to cool them down. Go ahead and measure these. That's the 4.07 one. I upped this one to four. I upped this one to uh, about four, 3.99 apparently. I upped this one to 3.99 as well, or four you saw there. And then this cell is four even as well. So the front one is still 0.06, 0.07 above the rest of them, but that did bring our fourth bar back. Keep in mind though, that this is not a permanent fix. Milwaukee warranties their batteries for three years. However, that three years is from date of manufacture. I bought both of these in a kit which means that they are, they were about a year old before I even got them. So I only had two working years with them. Reason I know that is because I did attempt to go through the warranty process when I saw they wouldn't charge past the 
third bar there. And they said, you are out of warranty. However, if you send them in, we can repair them for you at a, a fee, of course. So I figured, okay, what, what on earth would they do? They're obviously not going to replace the bad cells. They're likely going to just do what I just did, only quicker. They probably have a fixture just to quickly charge all those and then send them back to me. So I figured I'd just do it instead of paying them. I think it was gonna be like 80 to 100 bucks. So no thank you, plus shipping. The reason they went out of balance is because some of the cells have a higher internal resistance, meaning the quality of the cells is worse on some than in others. In this pack, it was actually four <laughs> little groups uh, only one was good, the rest were under four volts. So this, most of these are pretty bad. So hopefully they go down and I get at least another year to two years, that would be nice. I'm kind of waiting for the Forge battery packs, the eight amp hours, which apparently are tabless. And the reason I'm looking forward to those is in order to properly maintain tabless cells, you need to charge each group individually anyway, which means that there'll be a very unlikely possibility that the battery will go bad due to cell imbalancing. However, they're hard to get and they're a little overpriced, so I wanted to at least get these to last in me another year. But there you go, so that's how you fix it. One thing I think I will do is I'm gonna take this one, pop it on the old string trimmer, do a little string trimming, and see if she charges all the way back up to full. All right, we ran it down to a blinking single bar. This is the eight. She's a little warm still, but uh, I'm gonna put it on the charger here. We're gonna do the rapid since I ain't got all day. Let's leave that there and see if it finishes with a full four bar. She is solid green, Let's pop her off. And uh, see, all right, we got four bars. So let's go ahead and disassemble her and see what our voltage reads. Four. But if I could see the darn edge there, there we go. 4.08, oh. 4.08 again. 4.08 and 4.18, okay. It looks like uh, since these are at four, brought them up to that old 4.7 and that original cell set that was at 4.07 is now at uh, closer to 4.2. I could charge these up, back up a little bit, boost it up even more, uh, but for the amount of time it took to do that, I'm gonna call this good. And I'm gonna call this uh, worth doing if you want to breathe a little more life into your high output XC 8 amp hour or 12 amp hour battery. Have fun and until next time, I am the ill-informed human. Goodbye.